Good morning. My name is Megan Humphrey. I am the executive director of HANDS and we're a nonprofit in Burlington, Vermont. And um, our mission is to get food to uh, seniors who are 50 years and older. And we do some other programming as well. Besides this great Hands in the Dirt series with Charlie Nardozzi, we also um, provide a meal and gift bag delivery on Christmas day. We do nutrition education workshops um, with Chef Robin Burnett and the Heinerberg Senior Center. And we provide a support buddies program also in partnership with Heinerberg and some other folks. And we want to especially thank AARP Vermont and Hannaford for their financial support. And we desperately need this workshop today, Charlie, since there's snow outside and it's very cold. So thank you very much for being here. Well, thank you, Megan, and it's always a pleasure to be here, and I want to just get this all set up so that we can be ready to go here. There we go. So hopefully everyone can see me okay. And uh, what I wanted to uh, chat about today with, uh, with everyone who is watching live or watching um, on the recording that we're doing of this, uh, is talk about indoor herb growing. And I'm, I'm not sure if Megan mentioned, I don't remember, but uh, we're gonna be doing this every month right through the growing season. So we're gonna start, um, of course, indoors in February and March with things like indoor growing. But then once the weather gets better, hopefully we'll be able to be outside a little bit uh, with the video and I'll be doing some presentations and, and things of that nature. So hopefully it'll be something where we can garden together. How about that? Uh, starting things indoors this time of year, moving them out into the garden, and then as problems come up and, and situations and issues come up, uh, we can deal with them here um, once a month uh, on this program. So thanks for coming and thanks for your interest in gardening and uh, hopefully it, it makes your day a little brighter. And it's always one of the things I like about it. So indoor gardening, uh, indoor herb gardening in particular, uh, it's a great way to really bring a little bit of the, the taste, the sense, um, the, the flavors of your garden inside. And this time of year, we're talking mid to end of February, is actually a nice time to kind of start some uh, what we call windowsill herbs, even though I'll talk more about the lighting and, and how sometimes that's not the best way to grow them. Uh, but we'll call them that for now, uh, because uh, the days are getting longer, as you've noticed, you're getting some more sunshine. Um, actually, the day lengths now are equal to probably around you know, October, so it's not that bad. Um, and with those longer day lengths, you might even notice your house plants, for example, if you have some house plants, um, they're starting to put out some new growth. So starting some herbs, either from seed or transplants out, is a great way to kind of get them going, getting a jump on the season. Um, and I'll talk more about seeds and transplants and all that kind of stuff in, in a little bit. Um, and the idea is to grow either culinary and or scented herbs. So culinary herbs like this rosemary, which is right here. You can kind of see it. This is one I brought in last fall. Ah, nice fragrance, great for uh, roasting potatoes and, and using in lots of different dishes. Or something like this plant. This is a mint plant. And this is another one I brought in from last year. And this one is good. You know what I do in the winters? I just walk by this plant. I do this. I, I do a little scratch and sniff. Ah, <laughs> just to give myself a little sense of just being out in the garden again. Um, so you can grow herbs for various reasons, whether you're going to cook with them or whether you just want to have the sensory pleasure of smelling them. It's really a nice thing to do. Uh, but when you're doing indoor herb gardening, and especially if you're doing it all through the winter, not just starting in February, March, but starting way back in November, um, there's certain things you need to keep in mind. And I want to cover those today so that you have an idea of what to do now and then also how to do it next fall and winter uh, when you're moving uh, into those dark days again. And the things you need to keep in mind are uh, which herbs are the best ones to grow in a, a sunny window, um, how much light you need, which of course is a really important thing, um, the containers that you're going to use for them, the potting soil you can use for them, um, and then any accessories and special care things. And that's kind of one of the things I'm going to go over um, here. So first of all, if you're new to indoor herb gardening, you haven't ever tried to grow herbs inside before in the winter, um, there are certain herbs that are easier to grow than others. And, and easier is really more about they grow faster and uh, they can 
uh, tolerate lower light levels. So ideally, if you're trying to grow herbs indoors in the winter, you want a sunny window, a sunny south facing window, like a bay window or a sunroom, something like that. That's gonna give you the widest range, the most number of options of herbs that you can grow successfully. The other option, of course, is to have grow lights. Uh, and that is something that many people have because they start their own seeds. So if you have grow lights, it's easy because most herbs will do well underneath a nice grow light setup, especially if you have those uh, full spectrum grow light tubes like the T5 compact fluorescent tubes. Um, they'll really, or LED lights for that matter, they really will provide so much light that you can grow everything, including basil um, indoors in the winter. But I'm really kind of thinking that most people are not going to have a grow light set up that's going to be readily accessible. So let's talk about growing them in a window. So if you have a sunny window, that south facing window, you can get away with some herbs that are, um, or, or if you have an east or west facing window, you can get away with some herbs that don't necessarily need as much light to grow and, and thrive. Um, one of them is chives. Um, I'm sorry that everything's a little backwards, but you know what this is. <laughs> uh, chives are really easy to grow. They germinate fast um, and they grow in kind of partial sun. Another thing that'll grow really well that way is parsley. Um, flat leaf or curly leaf parsley, they don't need as much light um, as some of the um, other plants, that other herbs that are out there. Um, and of course, this mint that I'm growing here too. Um, it'll get a little leggy, but that doesn't matter because you can always cut mint back. That's a really nice thing about mint. So if you have a, a window that maybe doesn't get, it maybe isn't south facing, it's maybe east or west facing, does, or if it's south facing, it gets light part of the day, and you wanna try indoor herbs, those are the three I would recommend. Try, try to get starting with those. If you have a little more light, say you have a south facing window or a really bright room, you can start going more towards the Mediterranean herbs. And those would be things like the rosemary that I showed you just a minute ago, um, or sage, this, uh, poor looking little sage plant, it's still alive. <laughs> I'm proud of it that way. Um, thyme, oregano, those Mediterranean herbs, if you, if you think about the Mediterranean, it's very bright, even in the winter. It may be cool, but it's very bright. Um, so that's why these uh, herbs need a lot of sun. And I know people have tried to overwinter rosemary. This is a rosemary, the one here I'm talking about, that I did bring in from outside. Actually, it was growing in a pot and I just moved it inside. Um, and it's done well. It's still alive. It's got some new growth on it. Uh, I pinch it every once in a while when I'm cooking things. Um, and the key with these Mediterranean herbs to get them to overwinter indoors is to have bright light, a lot of light. And, that's, and we're blessed with having a beautiful south facing uh, room. You're kind of in part of our little dining room here where we have windows on the east to west and the south side. So it's very bright. And that's why it's done so well. When it doesn't survive, it's usually a number of different things that's happening. Uh, the first thing would be that not having enough light on it. Uh, another thing is that you overwater it. You want to water it when it gets really dry, but Mediterranean herbs like it on the dry side. They like a really well-drained soil. So wait till it kind of gets really dry, then water it thoroughly so it comes out the drainage holes. Um, and also uh, some of the rosemary plants are susceptible to mildew diseases. So put it in a place where there's good air circulation. Don't crowd it in with other plants, but give it its own little space so it has good air circulation around it. So those Mediterranean herbs are good if you have more sun. Now, if you want to grow things like cilantro and basil indoors, um, you can try to put them in a sunny window, but they're going to get kind of leggy. I would suggest putting them under grow lights until, ah, this is the caveat, until we get more into March and April, when the days are really getting longer, then you can certainly start basil and cilantro in a window. Now, cilantro, you're probably thinking, well, what's the big deal with cilantro? The thing that happens with cilantro is that it'll bolt really quickly if it's not if it's under stress and not getting enough light means it's under stress. Uh, basil, of course, you know, just needs a lot of light, a lot of, uh, of sunshine on it. Now, there certainly are a whole host of other herbs that you could try to do, uh, lemon bombs, and some people even grow bee balm indoors, and all these other types of herbs that you can grow inside um, as a, a culinary herb or a fragrance herb. Uh, but I wanted to stick with these right now because these are probably the simplest and the most widely available ones to do. So first thing is to assess your situation, what's going on, um, select the right herbs for it. Then you wanna decide how you're gonna start your herbs. Ideally, it would be great if we could all just go to a garden center and get a plant like this. This little parsley here is just really cute. It's, I've been snipping at it for weeks, if not months, and it keeps growing and everyone is happy. So 
Uh, garden centers are really doing more and more of that. They are really starting to um, introduce and have herb plants in. So I know the rosemary plants and lavender plants, for example, um, but even some of these culinary herbs, they're, they're getting better about carrying them into the winter. So that would be my first step. I, I would, especially this time of year, since we are already into mid end of February, um, you might want to start with a transplant that'll give you almost the immediate satisfaction because you could, if it's a healthy plant like this parsley, um, you could be starting to clip it, you know, within a week or two of uh, purchasing it. The other option, of course, is to grow things from seed. And there is really a lot of different seed out there that you can grow lots of different plants. I was mentioned the chives, uh, basil, sage, all kinds of different things. The nice thing about seed is that, of course, it's readily available. There's lots of it out there, lots of varieties. Maybe you want lemon thyme and not regular thyme, that kind of thing. The downside of seed is, well, you got to start them. <laughs> and this time of year, it takes sometimes two, sometimes even three weeks, like with parsley seed, for example, to get germination happening. So if you quickly do the, the math with the, the calendar, you could be well into March before you even get a seedling coming up. So by the time you get something that's really gonna be edible, it'll be probably time to put it outside. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're starting bringing things from seed um, this late in the season. If you're starting them in the fall from seed, then you've got that whole winter to kind of nurse them along so that by this time of year, you can have a full size plant. Um, so starting from transplants or starting from seed, both are different options. Now, uh, again, kind of pointing a little bit towards um, the fall, um, if you have some of these plants in your garden, like chives, like mint, um, you can just take divisions of them, pot them up, say in September or so, uh, let it nurse them along outside for another month or before the really cold weather comes, then bring them inside. And that's what I did with uh, this, this uh, mint plant here. Um, that way you have a, a healthy plant in a pot ready to go. You just have to be careful, of course, when you're bringing things inside, there might be insects kind of hanging on them. So you wanna quarantine them away from your house plants and other plants, um, and then kind of check them for a few weeks. Uh, then after that, just let them grow. Now, a nice thing about some of these transplants like this mint plant, I'll put it a little closer here. I don't know if you can actually see in there, but you'll probably see some of these little shoots that are coming. It's a little hard to see with the lighting. Sorry about the lighting here, but there are little shoots all through where my finger is here in the soil. So what I'm gonna do with this mint plant, I didn't wanna do it now, uh, before now, because I wanted to show it to you, is I'm gonna whack it back. I'm gonna cut it way back. So you could uh, cut these stems off um, anywhere along the stem, really, you can cut it off. You can see that there's a little shoot right there coming up, so you can cut it right above that. That'll turn into a new stem. So whenever it gets leggy like this, you can actually cut it back and it'll send up shoots from the center. That's the cool thing about a lot of mint. Uh, lemon balm is like that too. There's a number of plants that, that send those out. Bee balm, you know, be like that too. So um, if you wanted to make a mint tea, for example, you could cut all of these off, dry them, and then you have mint tea. In fact, some of these are even coming off already. Look at that, little leaves. <laughs> uh, so that's the nice thing about having a whole plant, especially a perennial plant like a mint, is that it just keeps on sending up uh, more and more shoots for you, um, especially this time of year as the days are getting longer. So let's talk then about uh, once you kind of decided which herbs and, and you decided to go with seeds or with transplants, depending on what you could find, let's talk about uh, the containers that you're going to use. And there's lots of different options. So the, the basic one that most people know about are the, the plastic pots. And I usually recommend like a four inch pot that has good drainage holes. You see the drainage holes there, I'm showing you, there you go. Uh, four inch pot uh, is a nice size because you can start seeds in it and they'll grow well. Um, but when the plant gets big, like some of these plants, like this, these are four inch round pots, uh, like these rosemary here and the sage and the parsley, um, they'll still be fine. You can grow them right through the winter in that size pot. It works out pretty well. Um, the other option um, that you might want to take a look at um, are cow pots. These are biodegradable pots. Now, these are like the pea pots or cow pots. They have that drainage hole too. You see it right there uh, in the bottom. And the thing about the cow pots is that you can put your plants in there and then if you're going to move them outside into the garden, this is a great way to do it because you don't disturb the root system. Uh, so you, you put your soil in, you put your seeds in or even a little transplant in there, you grow it out and then come May or so when it's ready to put it into the garden, you can bury the pot and all in. Make sure you bury this pot so that the lip here is under the soil line too because if it's left exposed above the soil, it'll wick out moisture and it'll dry out. 
The other thing I like to do with cow pots or pea pots, you know, either one of those, is to break them up, break up the, the sides of them and the bottom of them when you're transplanting them, because I found that they, they do break down and they do uh, help fertilize the plant as they break down, but they take some time to do that. And in the meantime, the roots get kind of constricted. So by breaking it up, you allow those roots to remove themselves from the pot and, let you, and yet you have the pot there that is going to break down and feed your plants as you go along. And then of course, the other option is, is what I have here, our metal pots, which is kind of the new chic thing to do. <laughs> uh, the good thing about metal pots is that, well, they're metal. Uh, you're gonna have them forever once you have them. Um, they also, if you have a sunny window, they will heat up, which is great for plants like rosemary that like the heat. Um, they have drainage holes in the bottom here. I plug this one because I have them on a tray, um, but they do have a drainage hole in the bottom there. Um, and so they're really nice and they're more decorative. So if you're starting your herbs in a kitchen or a dining room area and you wanna have them um, close to a window or on a table near a window, um, this looks a little bit better than having like a, a plastic pot is there. Um, it's kind of an aesthetic thing. It depends upon how you look at it. Um, so all these different pots have different advantages. You know, the plastic pot is good for plants like parsley and mint that like more of a wet, moist soil because this one you don't have to water so much. The, the cow pots are good for plants um, that you're going to move outside. You don't want to be transplanting it you know, from a seedling to another seed to another seed, um, like a rosemary, for example. And then these uh, metal pots are good for plants that like it a little bit warmer uh, because in the sun they will heat up. Um, so you don't have to absolutely do all those types of things, but it's good to know the difference in, in the pots. And of course, there's clay pots like this one that my sister-in-law uh, painted for us, <laughs> which is very sweet. Uh, these are good for well plants that like well drainage. So uh, plants like those Mediterranean herbs um, because it drains the soil and wicks moisture out of it. So clay pot is good for anything like that. That's why it's so good for uh, a geranium uh, you might have seen. Uh, so once you've got your pots then, right? You got all your containers, then you got to put something in them. And that would be potting soil. <laughs> so you want to get some potting soil and you want to get <clears throat> potting soil excuse me, potting soil based on uh, how you're starting them. So if you have a, got little transplants from a garden center or somewhere, um, then you wanna get regular potting soil. And I would recommend an organic potting soil that has compost in it. Um, and that's really kind of the best one to use. If you're starting them from seed, if you're growing things from seed, you wanna get something called a germinating mix. Now, a germinating mix is a little bit different in the sense that um, the the mix is finely milled, it's really, really ground down. So it's light and fluffy. It's great for small seeds like thyme and oregano and even basil seed for that matter. They have very small seeds. So if you have a germinating mix, they're gonna be more likely to, to be able to penetrate into that soil, especially when it's wet um, and germinate and, and grow faster and it'll drain that moisture, which is again, key for any of those Mediterranean type herbs. Um, so also when you get your soil, I'm gonna do a little, Hopefully you'll be able to see the differences here. So some of the soil you get is mostly gonna be uh, with a peat moss based. Um, and peat moss of course is a, a material that gets mined or milled um, up in bogs like in Quebec. So a lot of people are, are kind of going away from that. I'm not sure if you can really see that very well. Probably not. Well, it was a good idea. <laughs> so the, the peat moss based uh, soil, looks, you know, you know, you've seen this, you, you know what it looks like. It's got perlite in it. It's got that white little crystals in it. Um, it's a nice one to use. It's what everyone uses. But if you want to be more, more environmentally responsible, you might want to try this mix. This is called Quar. And you can see it a little bit there. This is made from coconut husks. So what they do is they, in the, the coconut industry, they found out that the coconut husk, which you normally just throw out and and actually burn, um, they found out that it makes a really good soil medium, especially for seed starting. And the reason is coir is different from peat moss, from the peat. Uh, the peat is what we call hydrophobic. Now, hydrophobic sounds just like what it sounds like. It's afraid of water. It doesn't like water. So you know this about peat if you've ever put it down uh, around your plants and then you tried to water on top of dry peat moss, what happens to the water? it just rushes right off. It just kind of goes away. It doesn't really soak in very easily. You have to really work it into the soil. Same as with your potting soil. That's why I always recommend, you know, getting a bowl like this, put your potting soil in before you're gonna start seeds, put some water in and then really massage it so you get it nice and moist. Because if you put it in a container like this and it's dry, then it's gonna take a lot of energy for it to really soak into that peat. 
So it's hydrophobic. It makes it a little harder. Once it's wet, it tends to stay really wet, which could be a good thing if you have a pot. But if you have little seeds that like it well drained, it may not be a great thing because it might rot those seeds. So there's some things with peat moss that are, aren't necessarily the best for seed starting. The coir that I mentioned, that coconut husk material that um, I have here in my hand, this stuff is much better because it's hydrophilic. Now hydrophilic means that it likes water. <laughs> if you actually look at that coir under a microscope, it looks like tiny little tubes that are going down through it and the water runs through it. So when you moisten coir, it doesn't have that kind of soppy wet uh, moisture to it. Uh, when you moisten the coir, what ends up happening um, is that it just kind of runs through it. So it's, it's as moist as a damp sponge. It's probably the, the best way um, that, um, to describe what it's, what it's like. So the coir um, is a really good one for the seed starting because it, it stays moist enough for the seeds to gather that moisture and germinate, but it doesn't sit there and get really wet. It also has some other advantages. Uh, for example, it pH neutral. So that's good for most plants, in, uh, whereas peat moss tends to be more acidic. Um, and it has what we call good cation exchange capacity. That's basically what it means is it's taking up nutrients. So if you can look for a, a potting mix with coir in it, um, even if it has peat moss and coir, it's still gonna be a good thing to have. Or you can make your own mix, of course, using coir, using, I would use maybe 50-50 coir and peat moss um, for the drainage capacity. And then you can mix in a, a, the compost and other kinds of things like that. So you wanna have your soil um, all mixed up, ready to go, um, moistened, pre-moistened. And then, of course, you're going to start your seeds. So if you're starting, say, basil seeds, if you ever go to garden centers, you'll notice when you buy a little four, a little uh, four inch pot of basil seed, it's got probably 20 basil plants in it. It's kind of a new thing that they do in garden centers. You know, it used to be you'd get like little six packs, you know, one plant per pack. But for some plants like basil, you don't have to worry about that. Chives are like that, too, um, meaning that these guys are easy to transplant and they don't mind being crowded in a little pot as long as you're going to get them out of that pot and then into the ground or into a bigger pot as soon as they get to the, their bigger leaf stages. Um, so you're going to spread some of those seeds in the top. Now if you're doing things like sage for example, um, you probably are going to want to just do maybe three or four seeds and that's about it. You don't want to crowd them. Um, thyme and oregano are the same thing. Um, just enough that you ensure that you're going to get a couple plants in there. <clears throat> But for the chives and the, and the basil, as I mentioned, you can put in 10 seeds or so per each one of these pots, each one of these four inch pots that we have. Um, and then uh, put them in the window or the bright spot. So first of all, I, I shouldn't say window because I really don't want you to put them right up against the glass because we get those cold nights, below zero nights. That's really not gonna be good for any of these uh, plants, these seedlings or these transplants as they're growing. So put them close to a window, preferably um, near a window that maybe has a little table or something of that nature um, and gets a lot of light, a lot of bright light um, and keep an eye on them. The other thing that's really, a couple things that are really important, once you have them growing and germinating to keep them looking good and not getting too leggy and um, also not growing too fast, keep them in a cool room, a room that stays maybe in the 60s and not up around 70 or so. That's gonna be a way to slow down their growth, especially if you get something like this mint that really wants to grow. Uh, putting them in a cool room will really be nice. The other thing you might wanna to use to enhance the germination, if you're gonna grow them from seed, is use a seed starting mat. And that's what this is. If I can show it to you here, it is a seed heating pad or a seed starting mat is what it's called. It's got all kinds of information on there. But you can see it's just basically plugged into the wall. That's all you nearly need to use for it. I love these. I use this all the time for our seed starting because um, I start seed down in a basement, which is cool. Um, so I really want to get the soil nice and moist. Those seed starting mats or seed heating mats the way they work is that you plug them in, they're waterproof, so you don't have to worry about them getting shorted uh, with the electricity. And they, they heat up the soil um, about 10 to 20 degrees above what the air temperature is. So if you have a, a 60 degree room, you're getting up to, into the 70s with this soil. That's the perfect germination for a lot of seeds. Most seeds actually like to be up around 70 when they're gonna be germinating. That'll quicken the germination, reduce the amount of time that um, you might have to worry about them rotting in the soil. So you don't have to worry about that so much. 
Um, um, and you get a, a plant that's going to grow faster. You know, even once the plant is this size, if you keep it on that heating mat, you'll see that it'll grow faster because that, that heat really keeps the soil warm and it does dry it out a little bit. So you have to be uh, careful that you might have to water a little bit more once your seedling is up. Um, but I really like those seed uh, starting mats for those reasons, those heating pads for those reasons. I use them all during the growing season up until the plants get big enough to, for me to start moving outside. Um, so we have the pots, we have the soil, we have uh, ways to get them growing. When you put your pots in the window, you might want to look at some kind of tray system so that you can water them and not have to worry about it spilling out onto the table or anything, anything else. I like this one that I got um, locally. Um, you can see it there. Uh, this is nice because you can see it's got a little shelf here. Uh, and you put the shelf inside, it's actually a self-watering system, but you don't really even have to use it for that if you don't want. Uh, normally you would put a capillary mat on top of this and the water in the reservoir. But I like it just because it has that shelf there so that I can put the, the plants on top of it. And when I water, it drains right into the reservoir. That's the nice feature to have. The other nice thing about this is look at the size of it. It's perfect. It's like the, uh, it could sit right on a table or close to a windowsill. It doesn't take up a lot of space. So these are really nice to have. You might want to look around for certain trays that will fit the pot sizes that you have, those four inch size pots that you're using to grow a lot of these herbs. Once you have them up and growing, um, like I said, it, it really kind of depends upon what you're going to do with them at that point in time. So uh, if you're growing them just to put them back outside, you know, at this time of year, like a basil, for example, you can just leave them in the pot and let them grow up until we get to May or so, then, then transplant them. If you're growing them to have them indoors on a more permanent basis, then you're probably going to want to thin things out. Um, so you have one plant like this sage per pot um, or the rosemary, one plant per pot is really what we're looking at for some of these perennial herbs that are kind of woody. Um, those are probably to be the best thing. If you grow like a cilantro and you put too many in the pot, that's another stressor. And what that happens with those is then they bolt really quickly and you don't get many of the leaves to make your, your salsas and other kinds of great things. Um, so once it's up and growing, then you probably want to uh, keep it well watered, but also give it some fertilizer. And so there are a variety of different uh, products on the market. This is a gardener supply product, plant health care product. Um, that is a nice one to use. Um, we also use an Espoma organic product that works really well. Um, and I like the ones you mix in with water because every time you water or maybe every two or three times you water, you put a little fertilizer in. That's going to keep them growing. Now you don't really need to do a lot of fertilizing from November till, well, basically this time of year, early February, because the days are so short, the days are really cloudy, the plants are really not growing so much. Really what you're trying to do during those three, four months in there, three months, let's call it three months <laughs> in there, is that you just wanna hold your plant. You don't wanna really um, try to push it forward by giving it a lot of fertility, a lot of fertilizer. But starting now is a good time because like I said, you're seeing a lot of house plants and other plants are starting to put on new growth. That's the thing you look for when you want to know about adding more fertilizer. That's when you want to start doing it on a more regular basis, maybe every other or every two or three times you water, put a little fertilizer in there and let them grow. So hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of some of the things you want to uh, approach when you're starting to do some seed starting indoors. It all starts with, you know, finding a sunny window, unless you have grow lights, like, like I said, unless you have a, those grow lights, a nice sunny window. Then once you have that sunny window, that'll help determine which herbs you want to grow, whether it be ones that can take um, a little bit of shade, like the, the mint and the parsley and and the chives that I mentioned, or ones that like a little more sun, like the Mediterranean herbs of rosemary and sage, or ones that like a lot of sun, like basil. That's all gonna be dictated by what you have as far as light levels. Then using the pots and the containers and the watering, um, all is kind of part of that and, and starting if you can with transplants. So hopefully this gives everybody an idea about how to start some indoor herbs, um, whether starting them now or starting them um, in the winter, earlier in the winter to have them. And just to be able to have something that you can scratch and sniff is just great. Or taste like this parsley. I'm just gonna take off the parsley just to tell you. It really is parsley. It tastes like parsley. Um, so hopefully this helps you to uh, be able to grow these herbs indoors and do it successfully. <laughs>